Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. It's a very exciting one today because I'm looking at a brand new steam loco from Hornby. Just a few days ago, I was thinking to myself, do you know what, it's been quite some time since Hornby released something new. And then just a couple of hours later, I got an email to say the new P2 was in stock. All right, never mind then. So I paid my money and here is the P2. This is an all new tooled model. It has nothing to do with the old Hornby Railways P2 that Hornby brought out about 10 years ago. It is all brand new. Also, as you can see by the box, this is the version with the streamlined end, which Hornby have never produced before on any of their previous P2s, so that's exciting too. You can also see that this has the new style Hornby packaging, which I like a lot. It's a proper box, and this box came inside an outer box, which had some foam padding in it, and it seems to be such an upgrade over Hornby's old packaging, which is great to see. Now, I bought this model from D-Rails Models, not direct from Hornby, and I want to give D-Rails a massive shout out for their excellent service. Firstly, the RRP on Hornby's website is now a colossal £254.49 for this locomotive, which is quite a lot higher than it was initially because Hornby have increased the prices since they announced this model. That means at the retailers, this model now costs £229.04. However, because I pre-ordered this with D-Rails when this model was announced, they've actually honoured the original price I was going to pay for this, which was £207.89. And as far as I know, they've done that out of their own pockets. So the price to them, the retailer, has increased and they've actually sacrificed some of their profits to honour the original prices. Now, what an act of care towards their customers that is. So thank you very, very much, D-Rails. I also want to show you the way that D-Rails packaged this loco. So here that is, you've got the large outer loco box, and then D-Rails added the bubble wrap and the shredded paper, and also some packs of biscuits, which I understand are there to absorb any additional shock, although I will have a different use for those at some point. Anyway, great service from D-Rails. Do check out their shop. They're not paying me to say this, but you should check them out because they've got good prices and, like I say, an excellent service. But here we have the Hornby P2, brand new model. Let's get this out, let's see what this is like, and more importantly, let's see if it's worth the money. Very expensive, this loco. Fingers crossed it will be. So this P2 has been a very long time coming. It was announced in January 2021 as part of Hornby's 2021 range, but I guess it was delayed or whatever because it didn't turn up in 2021. Then 2022 came and went, still no P2, and here we are midway through 2023, and finally it has arrived. So Hornby have teased this loco for a very long time. Let me show you the end of the box then, and as you can see, this is product code R3985. It is the LNER Class P2 282, very interesting wheel configuration on this loco. And this is not Cock of the North, as Hornby have only, I think, produced before. It is Lord President, which is number 2003. This is also DCC ready with a 21 pin socket, which is a little different from most of Hornby's previous locos, which all have eight pin sockets. From now on, with new releases at least, Hornby's locos will have the 21 pin socket, which I guess is a little bit more modern. Let me show you around some more of the box then. So there's information on the P2 on the front. So if you want to pause and read the brief history, feel free to. And then on the other end of the box, you can see we've got the drawings for the P2, which interestingly are dated 2022. Now, if this model was announced in 2021, does that mean they didn't even draw the thing until a year later? That would certainly explain why it didn't come out in 2021, wouldn't it? Anyway, whatever. And then, I like this feature. Look at that. You've got a line drawing of the loco on the top part of the box. So certainly a massive upgrade in terms of packaging, and the box itself is good and sturdy. But I think I'm talking a bit too much now. We need to open up this box and see what the new loco is like. So I think unlike Hornby's other boxes, this one lifts up. 
let's do that. Oh, this is so exciting, isn't it? All right, big block of foam. Let's lift that up. Ah, nothing in the way of the loco now. There we go, shrouded in packaging. At this point, it looks kind of similar to the old Hornby P2, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what sort of features this new model has packed into it. So let me pull this out and we'll look at the contents of that in just a moment. First though, let's take a quick look at the paperwork and see if this reveals anything about the build. Class P2, 282 steam locomotive and tender. Let's open this up. So first of all, just a basic bit about lubrication. That's fine. DCC decoder and sound fitting. So as you might expect, the decoder goes into the tender although it looks as though the sugar cube speaker is not pre-fitted. That's a bit strange. I would kind of expect that at this price, but it isn't. That's where you put it if you want it. Accessories, all right. So we've got guard iron, drain cocks, steps, coupling bar and hook, pony truck axle assembly flanged, oh goodness me, and a driver and a fireman. Now that is a fantastic feature. Very few locos come with those. I'll be very interested to see those. I wonder if they're painted. And then below there, you've got a look at where those various accessories go. It looks as though the rear pony truck then does not move around. It looks like it's fixed in position and out of the box in order that your loco can handle tight radius curves. It has the non-flanged axle fitted. If you want your loco to be more realistic, you can fit the axle with the flanges on it, but then it won't be able to negotiate tight curves anymore. And that pretty much restricts it to just static display unless you've got very, very broad curves. All right, and then, oh, look at this. This is a bit of something different as well. Coupling assembly. This is not the normal Hornby draw bar. It looks like these are pushed together, much like we've seen on new locos from Rapido, KR Models, and Dapol. And that's something I've been calling for for a long time with Hornby. And I guess the P2 is the first loco to have a different drawbar assembly. So we'll take a look at that. Anyway, let's have a look at the loco. This feels pretty heavy, I must say. And of course it should, because this is a very large and expensive loco. Okay, I can see some exciting accessories in the top. And this really sets the precedent for what sort of model this is going to be. Man, this is just absolutely bursting. So what have we got here? We've got etched nameplates included, Lord President. What a fantastically high quality feature that is. Very pleased to see that. The crew are fully painted. Look at that, that is marvelous. And they are very high quality figures as well. Much better than Hornby's old figures that came with the railroad range locos, that's awesome. We do have proper articulating screw link couplings. That's another box checked. I do love to have the option to fit those. NEM coupling for the front and some brake rigging for the loco. Do you know what? I've not looked at the model yet and I can already tell that Hornby are really going for gold with this model. Every possible feature that they could think of seems to have been thrown at this model, which would certainly explain why this should be so expensive. But accessories and features is one thing. What does the model actually look like? Let's find out. I am so, so looking forward to this. Okay. What's the finish like? You ready? Let's do the reveal. Oh, absolutely breathtaking. Hopefully that comes across. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful finish on this model. The decoration and the livery look wonderful. The green is nice and rich. It doesn't look washed out like it did on the A23. I'm very, very pleased to see that. And like I say, the finish is great. Very, very satin finish on this. Now, are loco and tender coupled? Uh, they are, okay. So I guess I'll pull both of them out. And here it is, Hornby's all new P2, looking very odd indeed with the streamlined end. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these in model form. Ah, oh, but it is a sight to behold, isn't it? Absolutely marvelous. The weight seems to be pretty good. I'm not sure whether it's gonna be heavier or not than the previous P2, because that had a very, very heavy chassis on it. But this one seems to have that as well, so that's good. The running plate is just plastic, unfortunately, although it does look fairly straight. And the bodywork, similarly, is just plastic, but again, great finish on that. 
Gosh, this looks absolutely wonderful. Um, and I must say it feels like a quality model in the hands as well, as well it should. So that is marvelously exciting. I cannot wait to do a deep dive on this model. I'm gonna look at all of its features, all of its details, the build quality, the mechanism and the performance. And we'll get started with that in just a second after I've given you some background on the P2s in real life. The LNER Class P2 was first introduced in 1934 to the design of Sir Nigel Gresley, and as you can probably tell, it was a very unusual design right from the start, with its lens rotary cam valve gear and the 282 wheel configuration, which optimised the locos for heavy express work, hauling consists over the difficult and hilly terrain of Scotland. From 1936, the P2s were given streamlined fronts like the A4s, since the A4's shape allowed them to lift smoke above the cab much more effectively than the original P2 design did. The whole design was a success too. They hauled those heavy trains with impressive acceleration and with decent speeds until the Second World War came along. The war made things very difficult for the railways, and there were concerns over maintaining such a relatively non-standard locomotive. So ultimately the class was rebuilt by Edward Thompson in 1943 for a variety of reasons, not just the constraints of the Second World War, and like Gresley's Hush Hush, the P2 then became a much more conventional and, you might say, unremarkable looking steam locomotive at the end of it. To date, no original P2 remains under preservation. So there she is, up close and personal for you. Hornby's brand new P2 in all of her glory. And I've had chance now to look over the loco and some of its details and features. And yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be a very positive review because look at this thing. It is absolutely stunning. Obviously though, given the exceedingly high price of this model, I think it does need to be held to quite a high standard. And in light of that, there are one or two things about this that I think are quite surprising. The first thing is the weight. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with the weight here. It's a decently heavy loco. It comes in at 447 grams with the tender. This is however quite considerably lighter than the old Hornby Railroad version of this model. And like I say, quite considerably, the railroad version is 50 grams heavier than the new one. Now, this new model costs up and over 250 pounds at the full price. Is it really reasonable that it should weigh quite considerably less than the old cheapo railroad version? I don't think so. It's quite preposterous in a way. And the reason for this, I think, is due to the plastic running plate. Again, this feature is quite a surprise. It is perfectly straight, I should say that. If I hold my ruler up, you can say there is no warping on this occasion, which is great to see. But the fact is Hornby's prices are quite above and beyond those of other manufacturers these days. And yet, usually those other manufacturers do fit die-cast running plates to their locos these days. So in some ways, I think there's a bit of a disconnect between the locos features and its price point. In other areas though, the Loco's features certainly match the price point. We've seen all of those accessories that the Loco came with, lots of those are high quality features. And the Loco itself is exceedingly high quality, it is incredible. So let's start by talking about the decoration. The first thing I noticed was the finish, which is excellent on this. Hornby have really cracked it. The shade looks spot on, the finish is excellent, not too glossy, not too matte, just brilliant. The lining is faultless as well. No overlaps, no misalignment. It looks absolutely perfect. Look at the complexity of the lining around the cab area. Yes, yeah, wonderful and yet still perfect. The lining around the streamlined end looks wonderful as you can also see and even the wheels have the decoration on them. And look at the quality of these wheels. The axles in the center blackened, so sharply painted and the rest of the wheels are excellently molded and painted as well. They do look extremely good. And even the chassis where it's visible is lined as well. Very, very precise lining on all aspects of the model, which is really excellent. The Lord President nameplate looks wonderful, even though this is just the printed version, but it does have a great finish to it. Such a high quality print. And the same is true with the lettering on the side of the cab. 2003 looks excellent and the little builder's plate underneath there looks very good as well. The decoration is wonderful. 
Let's take a look at some of the Locos details then. First of all, you can see this version of the P2 has the later Wolfshirts valve gear on it, which is expertly modeled as usual from Hornby. And it's just occurred to me that I don't have too many eight coupled locomotives with this valve gear. So it should be quite interesting to see that run. The running plate has quite a lot of separate details on it, including these little turning wheels and the mechanical lubricators and such. In the past, these parts have just been a part of the molding and they do stand out a lot better now that they are separately fitted. The loco also has wire handrails and all of the pipework along the side of the boiler is separately fitted. Here's a look at the buffer beam, which of course, don't forget, you can fit the screw link couplings onto if you want. There's also a pre-fitted vacuum pipe on here, separately fitted lamp brackets, which all look good and straight, and metal buffers, which are sprung. Yep, sprung buffers. I think I'd throw a hissy fit if these were not sprung, but uh, my rage can remain contained today because sprung buffers indeed. Above here, we've got just a plastic whistle, which I think is a pity because it's quite clearly just plastic, unlike the safety valves at the other end, which are clearly metal and separately fitted, and those look a lot better in terms of finish. In this area, we've also got the opening vents on top of the cab, which have a great smooth motion to them. They remain flush to the model, and I'm not constantly frightened of them dropping off, which is great to see. The Loco has a few other metal details, such as the reverser rod on this side. Look at that, there we go. And then over on the other side, we've got the Speedo assembly, which is not connected to the wheel, which is unfortunate from a realism point of view, but in terms of accessing the chassis for servicing purposes, this works a lot better. So yeah, no major complaints on that. Let's take a look at the pony truck then. Does this move when the Loco runs forwards and back? Yeah, it does. So it must be resting on the track just enough so that it turns, which is as it should be. So while that axle isn't ultra realistic, at least it turns as the loco moves, which is the main thing, I suppose. Let's take a look at the cab detail then. So we've got some intricate glazing on the outside, which looks great. And the detail inside the cab looks wonderful as well. This is an incredibly detailed cab. It's complete with a metal tender full plate, separately pre-fitted cab doors, full paintwork on the gauges and quite a few separately fitted controls as well. What a wonderful cab. And don't forget, this also has the firebox glow slash flicker effect, which hopefully we'll be able to see once the Loco gets up and running. You can also see the coupling between the Loco and Tender is quite pleasing. And that's because of this kinematic drawbar between the Loco and Tender. And of course, this Loco is not a lion. You'll be surprised to hear. It's not a great Western mogul. It's a massive, powerful steam locomotive. And so there's going to be more strain put onto this coupling than there would be on a lion or the Dapple Locos that we've already seen. And sure enough, this drawbar is very sturdy. It actually requires quite a bit of force to pull these apart. A lot more force than my Newton meter could measure, which is great. That means the loco and tender will not be coming apart unnecessarily. It does mean though that a bit more force is required to push them together. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. So the two are located. I should now be able to push. There we go and they're coupled quite firmly there. So yeah, I would say that's a great design as long as it works properly and all of the contacts are working. Yeah, I think this is a great solution that Hornby could and should use on future locos. Let's take a look at the tender then, which has been finished off to the same high standard as the loco. So the lettering on the side of the tender, all top notch. So is the lining on both the body and the underframe. Yeah, that red just looks excellent, doesn't it? And such a great contrast between that and the green of the wheels too. Quite a low coal load this time, which does seem to be separately fitted and that reveals some of the ribbing on the inside of the tender. So there's even more detail here on this tender. Around the front, you've got some separate details and controls, which all look excellent. And then around the back, you've got separately fitted wire handrails, lamp brackets, and steps. And the buffer beam looks excellent too, with its separately fitted vacuum pipe, coupling hook ready to accept the screw link, and then the NEM coupling on the back, which is lightly sprung. One thing that has struck me as I've been looking at this model is the build quality. Everything here is right. I haven't seen a single glue spot. I haven't seen a single blip in the decoration. There's no warping in the plastic details. There's no warping in the running plate. Everything has been put together to a very high standard, which is great to see from Hornby. 
In the past, there have been quality problems with Hornby, visible glue, warped running plates and such. I am glad to see that here on a £255 locomotive that these issues have been addressed and corrected. And that goes for the livery and the finish as well. The quality of this livery truly matches what the best of the other manufacturers are achieving these days, which is really good to see. So there you have it, the all-new Hornby P2. I think in terms of appearance, we can give that a very definite pass, but the big question mark is over the mechanism and the performance. What sort of quality are we dealing with inside this locomotive, and how well does it run? Well, let's find out. So there she is down onto the track, the all-new and absolutely incredible Hornby P2. And I've already filmed the initial performance test, and I won't spoil that for you right now. I'll show you that in just a second. After that, I disassembled the Loco to film inside it, and that's what I'm going to show you now. And this one is quite interesting, because Hornby have changed things quite a lot. It's more than just the drawbar assembly. First of all, though, pickups are as usual, so we've got all of the tender wheels picking up, in addition to all of the Loco driving wheels. That means we've got eight pickups per rail, which is an awful lot. Obviously, the loco is going to be very stable because of that. Here's what the drawbar looks like from underneath. As you can see, very nice and tidy with no visible wires. Again, I think that's a positive change. The base keeper plate is held in place via five screws, and removing those reveals that it is fully removable so that you can access the pickups for cleaning and you can oil the axles. The axles themselves have proper bearings fitted to them, as usual from Hornby, which is great to see. And there's just one axle driven on the wheel set, it's the one second from the back. But what's this? This is not another gear, it's not connected up to anything. I think this is a device so that maybe a light sensor could maybe detect how fast the wheels are rotating, possibly to synchronise the sound or the lighting. Now, on the chassis there is nothing connected so whatever it is is not included on this model, but maybe this reveals some plans that Hornby have for synchronised sound on the P2. It's quite an interesting bit of design there. Anyway, to remove the body, there are four screws to remove. There are two at the front of the loco and then two at the back. And pulling the body out reveals a very heavy die-cast chassis. Now, this motor I have never seen before. It looks quality though, and let me tell you, when it performs, it seems quality in that area as well, without giving too much away. There is also a flywheel fitted to this motor too, which is another high quality feature. Here's the LED at the back for the firebox flicker effect, you'll see that in just a second. And then in terms of the gauging, the loco wheels are quite consistently gauged at 14.3mm back to back. So this is a classic Hornby mechanism with a few tweaks. It's very high quality, it's got the bearings, quality motor, different motor than usual, which is very interesting. And uh, yeah, that weird synchronized sound system as well as the new drawbar. So it's the Hornby mechanism we're used to with a few nice additions. So that's the mechanism. Let me now show you how that initial performance test went. Right, well, we've worshipped the level of detail. You've seen what it's like inside this loco. Finally, though, it is time to see how this loco runs, if indeed it runs at all. So, forwards direction, let's find out. First ever test of the Hornby P2, easing up. Oh, wow. Um, slight issue from the tender there, is it on the track properly? Nope, that's my fault then, <laughs> that's good news. Uh, but yeah, how beautifully smooth was that? Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty darn impressive right there. And uh, right off the bat, I can probably tell you this is the best running P2 I've ever had. Yeah, this is quiet, this is smooth, and it's not even been run in yet. That is marvellous. Now, have we got lights on inside the cab? We have, but the firebox door has been designed so that it's quite difficult to actually see the light when you're spectating the loco from above. So, um, yeah, we have got lighting, but it's not ever so effective on this model. In fact, I'll be surprised if you can tell the lights are even working from this shot. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a pointless feature there. You have to be able to see into the firebox, I reckon, in order for that to be justified. Anyway, main performance is fine, though. What's it like in terms of a crawl? Let's have a look. I'm going to ease this up very slowly. 
like I say, this hasn't been run in yet, so I will do that before I uh, pass any judgment. But look at this, it's crawling. Yeah, I think it is. It's actually moving, folks. It's hard to tell, but it is. That is astounding. I think that's possibly the best crawl I've ever seen. Yeah, that's just ridiculous, that is. Can we accelerate smoothly from that? Look at that. On analog. A bit more. Wow. Well, I never knew what a 250 pound locomotive was supposed to perform like. Now I know. That is breathtaking. Wow. What's the gearing like? Let's run past at 50% speed. Yeah, that's believable. Yeah, absolutely fine. It's not a slow loco, so I think the speed makes a lot of sense. What's the torque like? This ought to be interesting. Here we go. Fingers on the buffers. 50% speed. It's got some torque as well, folks. Wow, what a wonderful, wonderful performer. So hopefully it will be okay around the track. And as long as it is, then this ought to be a massive thumbs up from me. So let's go forwards and let's run this in. 50%, here we go. Well, yeah, a little bit of a slowdown on the curves there. I suppose that is sort of to be expected with such a large wheel-based loco. But it did not stop or derail on the second radius, which is pretty good. And it does seem to be fine on the other curves, the wider radius ones. So, yeah, so far that's looking pretty good. How it will fare with rolling stock is another question. We will find that out later on. But for now, what a wonderful runner. It is so refreshing to see a loco that is such a great runner from Hornby. There's been one or two iffy runners in the past. The 9F was a recent Hornby loco that had some serious issues. Thankfully, whatever motors in this loco seems to be a lot better than that. It seems to deliver much better torque and the crawl that this loco is capable of is pretty much unrivaled by any other loco. Very, very impressed by that. So I will keep this running in. It's going to have 30 minutes forwards and then another 30 backwards. And then we'll come back and do some more testing and see what the performance is like then. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, folks, that is running in complete. And yeah, if I just cut it out, even at slow speeds like that, you can see that flywheel effect. Yeah, look at that. So great flywheel. That also means, of course, that the mechanism is very free from friction, which is great. Yeah, that went without a hitch. It does slow down a little bit on some of the curves, but not to the extent of the 9F or anything like that. The torque of this mechanism seems to be really, really decent. The pulling power is pretty good. It comes in at 0.48 newtons, which should translate to around 29 coaches on straight and level track. That's about the same as a Hornby A2-3, one of the new ones, and it's actually a little more than the latest Hornby 9F, so that's not too bad for a P2, I would say. And in light of that, I've set up my big rake of Gresley Teaks, and we'll see how she gets on with those. First, though, let's just have another taste of that crawl, just to make sure she can still do it. So let me ease her up on the power supply. Oh, it's just insane. How does it do that? Usually these larger locos from Hornby are not the best crawlers. Um, and the only thing that's changed that I can see is that motor. This is a different motor to usual and it can crawl a lot better and the torque seems to be a little bit better as well. So it's a definite improvement. Yeah. Look at that for an acceleration. Yeah, marvelous control, very, very impressive. So. Perfect performer. Let's go and couple up to some coaches. Just double check the couplings are at the right height. So my teats don't actually have the same couplings, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on the P2 if there are any issues, but actually there are not. Yeah, looking at the tender there, it's coupled perfectly even to the larger D-type couplings. So that's awesome. P2 with coaches then, here we go. Oh yeah, nice and steady. Well, let's accelerate, there we go. All right, and on the middle line, I've got another Hornby P2. This is the railroad version that I showed earlier on in the video. Um, yeah, this one was great at the time, but uh, yeah, the new model really shows this one up. But this one was probably about half the price, so 
There are going to be differences, I think that's fair to expect. And then on the inside line, I've got another Hornby Gresley Loco with a difference. This is, of course, the Hush Hush, which looks quite similar to the P2 in size, but this is a 464, not a 282. So here she goes up the incline with a load of coaches coupled now. And yeah, I would say there is a bit of slowing down going on here. So maybe the torque isn't the greatest in the world, although it's not struggling as much as the new 9F was. I should say I'm running on analog here, so your mileage may vary on different controllers or on DCC. But on the whole, I'm very, very pleased with the performance of this Loco. It is incredibly smooth, reasonably quiet, and the grace that it has, particularly at the low speeds, is just absolutely incredible. And beyond the performance, just look at this thing as it runs along. What an incredible looking model this is. I think everything comes together to just work with this Loco. The decoration, the paintwork, the finish, the detail, the cab, all of those special features, they just come together to make this model something really quite special. And that's not to mention the etched nameplates and the painted crew that also came with this model that I personally haven't fitted. A big complaint I see quite a bit in the comments from people is that a Loco never looks complete without crew. Well, this Loco came with crew, which is a bit of a game changer. So the Hornby P2, absolutely awesome. And now let's have some ratings then for Hornby's all new and quite outstanding class P2. Level of detail, I don't think I'll have any problem giving this one five star because it really is wonderful. Let's talk about accessories to start with. I saw these before I even clapped eyes on the model, but we've got etched name plates, we've got cylinder drain cocks, all sorts of extra details to fit to the Loco. You've got crew, how awesome is that? The Loco itself has a fantastic paint job with a wonderful finish, that looks absolutely stunning. You've got loads of separately fitted parts, whether it be handrails, pipework, lamp brackets, sprung buffers, it's got the lot. It's also got some metal details, including the reverser rod and the safety valves, and the cab detail is marvellous too. It's a fully painted cab and it's even got lighting inside it. It is a truly five-star locomotive. The performance similarly is very impressive, but I have just given it four star because it still struggles a little bit on the curves combined with the incline. So torque, not the most amazing in the world, but certainly an improvement over some of Hornby's previous models. In other areas though, it's even more of an improvement, particularly where the crawl is concerned. This is possibly the best Hornby crawler I've ever seen. The torque at the low speeds is incredible. The Loco can crawl so slowly, it doesn't even look like it's moving. So it's a fantastic crawler. It's also very, very smooth, quiet, and reliable with all of its pickups. The pulling power is pretty decent, 29 coaches, that's same as the A2 slash three, even a little more than the 9F. It isn't quite as much though as the Hornby Railroad P2, which was heavier, and that is one of the few downgrades that this new P2 has seen. A little bit disappointed in that, but still 29 coaches, straight and level track, that's nothing to sniff at. The mechanism then is a five star for me. This is the best Hornby mechanism I've seen for a long time, possibly forever. Pickups on lots of wheels, like I said, eight per rail, that's fantastic. Proper bearings, single driven axle, not too complicated. Very easy to access and service. The body removal works quite simply as well. Incredibly high quality motor with a good chunky flywheel on it. And it's also very convenient now to couple and uncouple the Loco and Tender. So very, very impressive indeed. No way to fault it, five star. The quality is also very high. The quality of the finish is higher than I've seen from Hornby in quite a while. The build quality is high as well with no broken or wonky parts and very little visible glue too. I have just knocked it down one star for the plastic construction though. I do think that at over 250 pounds RRP, this could have had a little bit more metal on it. It should have been heavier than the railroad P2 and a die cast boiler slash running plate at the very least would have done that, I think. But overall, it is a good quality model. We have seen slightly better though. Value for money then, I suppose, is this Loco's weakest aspect. The RRP of £254.49 is very steep indeed. This Loco certainly is a premium model, and so to an extent, the high price is justified, but I would have expected maybe a little bit more at this extreme a price. The retailer price of £229.04, which is what you would pay if you ordered one today, is a little bit better, but it's still way over £200. 
and I do think other manufacturers offer better value than this. Uh, so I've given it 2.5 star on the whole. It's middle of the road. Yes, it's incredibly expensive, but to an extent you do get what you pay for. So overall, that is a good score of 7.90 out of 10 or a grade of B. That means I can recommend it. Into the logbook we go where it is 13th, just missing out on the top 10 above the Rapido Hunslet 16 incher and below the Sonic Models A5. Yeah, I can highly recommend this. If you want to pick one up, there's no reason not to, except for the price. But hey, if you don't mind going without food for a month or two, this lovely P2 could certainly help you through that troublesome period. Well folks, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another review. What a special model this one has turned out to be. I'm going to be honest, it's an incredibly expensive model. It costs an awful lot of money and that will put it out of reach for a lot of people, which I think is unfortunate. And is the full extent of the RRP necessary? Uh, I don't think so really. If this had a bit more metal on it, if it was perhaps a bit heavier, then yeah, maybe I could understand that a bit more. But um, it's still the sort of standard Hornby Loco if upped a bit in terms of quality and assembly. But yes, to an extent, you do get what you pay for. And uh, I must say, I love this thing a lot. What a beautiful, beautiful model. So please do comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Have you got one yet? Are you planning to get one? What do you think of yours? If you have got one, please do let me know. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you very, very soon for another review. All right. Cheers, folks. You take care.